hi, and welcome to another episode of my podcast, Stories by Vera V. Today, I'm very excited to announce that I have a guest by the name of... Go. <laughs> and we'll be discussing what's it like being a marketing student at UC Davis. Interesting stories by interesting people. Stories by Vera V. So to start off, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, well, my name is Liko, and I go to UC Davis. I'm a sophomore right now. And I'm actually studying communications, but really wanting to get into marketing because that's kind of where I just love like the aspect of storytelling and being able to connect with people through that way. And so, yeah, that's where I'm kind of at right now. But And the marketing major, it does fall. So how does that work for the major part? Because that always kind of confused me because I thought marketing was its own, but then it falls into communications. So like basically the schools, so like the UC schools, we have like no marketing major, which is like its own business field, but mm-hmm. communication is kind of like the general, I guess, major. So if you can actually go in like different fields, like public relations, just a whole nother thing. Wow. And like some of the classes, like it kind of just helps you as a marketer. Obviously it's not the full direct route to marketing, but like you definitely get some skills through there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like if you, if your school doesn't have like a, marketing major like communication is probably the good way to go did you know that you wanted to study marketing specifically so like okay funny story is like I went to college thinking that I wanted to do like international trade oh wow (laughs) I know right and then I honestly like thought I really enjoyed it but it was more like myself like talking it was like talking myself into liking it that makes sense Uh yeah no I get that yeah right and then so like and my parents were like always like oh like you'd be such a good world trade person or something like that. And I was like, I was like oh yeah, like, you're so right. And like, I started doing research like all over summer, like, and like really investing myself in it. And then like, I go into college, take the classes, like an econ class. Cause that's like one of the things you got to learn. And I was like, what is this? Like, this is not fun. And then, so I was kind of like bored one day after I finished like my homework. And then, I was just watching like different career videos, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I found marketing. I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. And I just started watching this dude and he was like really engaging. And, I was like, oh. and he talked about storytelling and stuff. And I was mm-hmm. like, like, dang, this kind of, this kind of hits home. But yeah. <laughs> this kind of hits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? No, no, no. no. <laughs> but no, it's interesting. I feel like everyone has their own way, like how they find like their own little niche or whatever. But yeah, mine was through YouTube videos. This one guy <laughs> that was very engaging. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I don't know. It's interesting though. Like, it's crazy. I feel like communications definitely like, made me better in being able to kind of understand myself. Mm-hmm. Like, not just like career wise, but like it helps you really internally reflect on where you your strengths are because you're able to like kind of talk to yourself not like directly but like in the head what it is that like you're strong at and when you're good at or not good at and then like being able to know that and be more aware about what you're able to do kind of like it was something that helped but also with like talking to people and like relationships and stuff like that but yeah it's It's very interesting I feel like I hear that a lot with the introspection aspect of it you, they just mentioned, I hear that a lot of the psychology students because yeah. I know they're not supposed to, but everything they learn, they just apply it to themselves. No, for real. Like, <laughs> no, it's so like psychology would honestly be a sick, like major to go into too. I feel like, mm-hmm. I feel like you just, I feel like you'd be a really empathetic person, you know? Psychology? <laughs> yeah. No, literally, like we just like know people like you're able, able to like, pick in like oh maybe they're feeling this way like how can I help them kind of mm. you know yeah and with communication so I guess I, I kind of understand what people study in psychology because my sister she went to UCI UC no. Irvine oh, I'm so mm. jealous and she was I a psychology really yeah I didn't get it <laughs> I don't think you're missing out based from what I've heard <laughs> from her experience you're not missing out <laughs> no shade <laughs> but, it's um, like boba time over there yeah, no, and then there's also a line too. So, <laughs> so funny. But with psychology, I kind of get the way it's structured. But what about with communications? Like the courses 
or yeah and, and I guess what do you study specifically because I feel like it's such like a broad term and there's really a lot that goes into it so okay I might be wrong but <laughs> I might be wrong <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fluent in my own major but anyway um, so like basically what happens is like you take the like the lower rec- uh, prerequisite classes which are like general classes so you actually take like psychology sociology um a stats class and just kind of like the basics mm-hmm. and then you move up and you take the upper division which is where you learn like communication theories mass communication interpersonal communication and then those are like required as well and then at, after you take that those classes then you have like a bunch of a list of classes and you take like five mm-hmm. and it goes from like health communication um, political communication like marketing kind of communication and PR public relations stuff like that and you kind of like get to go in your own direction in that manner so everyone starts on like a same basis mm-hmm. and as you like get like move up your years you get to kind of go more into where you want to go so right now you're where at the basic classes or the upper division so right now I I finished all my basic classes this previous quarter mm-hmm. so right now I'm in the upper and once you're in upper you can like mix it up you don't have to like wait to take those more interesting classes you know so you can kind of just like take the required ones like the mm-hmm. theory classes but also like the like group communication like the more electives is that what they call them but mm-hmm. which ones are you how, taking right now so right now I'm taking media entertainment and like in balance kind of interesting you learn about like how like different forms of media like music videos songs and stuff provoke like these emotions such as like sadness appreciation anger like fear uh-huh. and like stress and stuff like that but it's like okay why do these people like want to see those things knowing that like Because it's, like, we know when we're stressed, so we tend to, like, watch, like, boring or, like, more slower things in terms of media. And then when we're, like, and same with, like, frustration, I guess, like, guys, like, they want to watch more frustrating things, like, argue, like, videos of guys in arguments and stuff. It's just a weird, like, Uh human biology, whatever thing. But, like... Googling people (laughs) arguing videos. (laughs) (laughs) For real, it's so weird. And like some people, like when you're like after a breakup, some people like will go listen to like Taylor Swift, like we're never yeah, like hyping themselves up. Or there might be people who listen to like R and B, and like kind of cry it out. You know, it's like everyone's like different, but it's kind of like understanding why some people do it that way and why some people go that way, knowing that like they're gonna feel the certain way because most of the thing is kind of conscious in some way because it's just how we manage like our moods like when we're happy we want to keep happy but when we're sad we're gonna try to fix our sadness like automatically Mm -hmm. that makes sense so that's so interesting just breaking it all down yeah and so right now I'm like learning about like appreciation like how like some people seek inspiration kind of like from you like for example and just like things like that it's pretty sick but then Mm -hmm. um the other class I'm taking is analysis media messages it's more political so it's like not that interesting for me but it's more about like learning about the whole media industry Uh uh-huh media is in what kind of media like NBC oh those big what are they called conglomerates conglomerates yeah exactly yeah yeah and how they basically run like 80% of the whole media industry. Like, yes. so big. isn't it crazy? Yeah, it is crazy. And like, and most of the audience or whatever is like within like 80% of like them watching that and everything else. Like the smaller TV shows, just 20% of the audience and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And also like how like news articles and stuff, they're like framed in certain ways. So, like, let's say there's one story, but it can be framed in multiple ways. So people get different perspective on things. It's like that confirmation bias or like, you know, yes, like that. No, it's it's basically the back end of what you see 
on like social media and TV and stuff. What is that theory called about how the media, because I, I remember learning about this. They can't tell you what to think, but they can frame it in a way. Like, Does that make sense? Like, I forget what it's called, it's, it's, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's like a specific word. I think so. I don't remember. <laughs> but it was invented by this guy. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Interesting. Wait, not it's not like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Not that, right? No, no. Like persuasion? I think sort of. I remember. But I think it falls into what you're saying. Okay, dope. Yeah. So that's like the other class. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just doing a Japanese class. And then that's basically it. Uh-huh. So, so three classes. Like three classes. And then like there's this thing where you can do an internship and like you get credits mm-hmm. for that. So I'm doing that too. And I'm just a like a digital growth marketer at this small like startup company. Okay. How's and that? It's good. It's good. Um right now we're working on like internally being able to like it's like an internal campaign almost or we're trying to, we have like an ambassador program. And so these ambassadors, they're really interested in marketing. And so right now what I'm doing is figuring out what kind of tasks or projects that they want to work on that can help them as a marketer and like develop those marketing skills. Cause all of them are high school students. Oh, wow. And then also how the things that they're doing to better themselves as a marketer, how they can help improve our brand as well. So it's like a win-win situation, I guess. Mm-hmm. No, but that sounds yeah. very interesting. And, interesting. and that's where communication comes in. Like, oh, how am I going to like talk to them? Like, uh-huh. you're going to think like a high schooler. What does a high schooler want? <laughs> like, <laughs> think like a high schooler. <laughs> right, no. It is. Yeah. Okay, what, what, what is like in for high schoolers right now? Like, is it like TikTok? What kind of TikTok content? Like day in the life things? Uh-huh. And kind of just like getting into their shoes and then communicating to them in that way mm. yeah wow <laughs> very interesting <laughs> i'm invested in this <laughs> okay and then like i was talking about this but like similar to you like you kind of do the similar thing like you create content and the audience that you create it for is similar like you guys are in a like same generation mm-hmm. so you're able to relate with them and they're able to relate with you and that's why like you're able to story tell really well, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you dive a little bit deeper into storytelling? Because I remember we discussed it before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm like still like trying to understand it. But <laughs> no, what I do, what I do to like better my skills in it is either I like read books or I listen to like podcasts while I'm like, taking a shower or whatever mm-hmm. but like so far I learned that like it's really like stories is what connects people together like without stories we're not able to talk to one another like that's just the root of conversations and so with that like it's such like a powerful thing especially when you're put in like that position where your story can like inspire other people like it's kind of like their testimony in that sense mm-hmm. and so like being able to tell yourself, tell someone like, I guess like what you've gone through or like what you've accomplished or the downfalls that you've had and being able to tell that in like such a powerful manner instead of just like using like boring words or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. It really makes a difference. And like, that's like so important, like the power of words when it comes to storytelling. Cause then like, it just like, it makes someone feel a certain way and it makes someone like either be like entertained by what you say, like educated by what you say or like inspired by like what you say. And that's kind of like, I don't know. It's just a crazy thing. And like a lot of brands do it. A lot of people do it like influencers and stuff. And so I just feel like, especially moving forwards, like that's kind of like where marketing is kind of going Instead of just like selling products, be like, hey, I made this like really good thing. <laughs> Use it. Like no one's going to do that, right? Let's just like, yeah. okay, like how can I like help someone with this product? What can I tell them that will make them like, oh, think that, they'll, that they actually needed this before they really realize that they needed it. 
and like being able to help them in that way instead of just like throwing things at people Mm -hmm. you know that makes sense because I feel like right now there's just a lot of really good products that are about the same level in the same exact niche and the only thing separating them like you said is stories yeah and like what happens like I think so like from what I learned is like when we have like those equal products like the same quality or whatever like they have all the same um benefits and stuff Mm -hmm. like we are not like we tend to just avoid it all because like we don't like being frustrated like from all the choices that we have yeah like or or that we will just go to the one that we're most like like we know the most I guess so like if you have like go into like a shop and there's like a list of like a bunch of band-aids different brands like you're most likely either to like get frustrated and just don't get the band-aid or you'll go to the one that's like most that you know the best I guess that makes sense yeah like the band-aid brand Mm -hmm. so the regular band-aid brand you would probably go to that instead of like the target brand etc etc no yeah for sure have you seen this kind of random but have you seen um duolingo on tiktok (laughs) their account Is, is this an app yeah, but have you seen their TikTok account? No, I have not. No, no, no. It is so is it good. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like what's happening right now is that most brands, even the really prominent ones like Duolingo, because it's, you know, it's an educational brand. Right. They're moving away from the cookie cutter content that's just like, like you said, oh, here's an app. You should get it. It's going to be <laughs> right, helpful. Right. And they're just moving more towards doing like different trends and relating to their target audiences, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, that's spot on. Yeah, yeah. Like that's like what will really like help I guess like brands like skyrocket. Mm-hmm. But then there are others like Tesla. They don't do any advertising. I've never seen a Tesla ad ever. But yeah. still, they're doing so well. <laughs> they're doing really well. It's okay. I think my perspective on that is like, I feel like Tesla has gotten such a strong reputation of like, oh, if you drive a Tesla, you're cool. And like, if you see someone driving someone, like it's, if it's like your neighbor, and let's say he's driving a Tesla and you like know your neighbor. I feel like my personal opinion is like, they're probably more likely to get that Tesla because mm-hmm. like his neighbor has it. And so like, he wants it now. And I feel like it's just a chain of things. And like, also, we you know, like the Tesla to be like really clean and like, made. I don't know if it's environmentally friendly. I, I don't be, know. I don't know if that's true or not. But, like, we just know that's, like, clean car, nice car, expensive car. Mm-hmm. And, like, because of, like, those elements and stuff, like, people are able to talk about that, like, to their friends. be like, oh, dude, like, Tesla's so sick. Like, it makes me feel so cool, blah, blah, blah. Like, you should get it. Like, I feel like it's such a word of mouth thing, which yeah. is why there's no advertising. But I wonder how it got started, because somebody must have started it. And why yeah. doesn't it work so well with other brands? I feel like that's really interesting. Like, so something I actually like watched or listened to like two hours ago is like the thing of a purple cow. But basically like if you're driving and you see a bunch of cows, regular cows, and you've already seen cows before, you're just going to drive by and be like, oh, it's just a cow, right? Mm-hmm. And then, but if you drive and you see a purple cow, you're like, what? Like, why is there a purple cow? Because it's kind of like remarkable. It's not like something of the norm. So I feel like Tesla, because it's not the norm, like it's very different from like all the other cars you see. Someone must have probably been like, oh, what the heck is that? And talked about it with their friends. Like, oh, did you a see purple that? cow? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I got that. That's from like, his name is Seth Godin, I think. He's like king of marketing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he kind of talked about that. And so I feel like that's probably where it started with the okay. Tesla. Because Tesla, in a way, is kind of like a purple cow. Yeah, the product being remarkable in and of itself. Yeah, and then people just start talking about it like, dude, do you see that? An electric car? (laughs) (laughs) No, and then maybe like a flying car. Like, do you see that flying car? And now let's go to the next thing. (laughs) I think in some futuristic movie, maybe in the 80s, they thought that there would be flying cars by 2020. Or was it it was like specific years like 2018 maybe is it okay do we have flying cars right now no <laughs> i swear no no 
You okay. thought that we did? <laughs> <laughs> I thought like they were like experiment, experimenting it. I think, is there like something where like the car can go under a tunnel and like zoom? <laughs> zoom as it like fly? <laughs> Lift up? <laughs> I, I don't, who's the guy who made the, who's the guy who made, oh, Elon Musk, I think. Mm-hmm. He, I watched this random video that like, he just came up on my YouTube and it was like video of like a car. <laughs> Like going under a tunnel and then the tunnel was like digged out and then the streets were on top so it was portraying like cars like going by like regular cars and it was like really slow and then the other one was like <laughs> basically like a flying car <laughs> yeah but there's no but it was like on the ground uh-huh. underground car <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I don't even know no, that's remarkable. <laughs> the next step in car technology, <laughs> cars. <laughs> live and see, live and see. <laughs> exactly. That's the next remarkable thing. <laughs> I guess we will see, because, I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's really hard to predict those kinds we'll of things. We'll probably be here when we'll see. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and so I also wanted to clarify, because you said that the guy who said about the purple cow he's the king of marketing so he's like i don't know like a king but like he's super well known Mm. and he goes more into brand marketing i'd say which is the more storytelling aspect because in marketing there's like different marketings yeah and so he focuses more on like the actual like human connection being able to help others because in his definition like some people think that like marketing marketers are kind of like liars and oh. like, <laughs> you know, like they just like try to sell things to make you buy it and it doesn't really benefit you or like but it's like, like the that. new york times best-selling book <laughs> and they say that about every single thing ever published <laughs> <laughs> like things like that it's just like to sell things because mm. and like also that like marketers are like people have a perception that marketers are selfish because like they get in that mindset of like oh, I've been working on this thing for so long, like two years or whatever. You guys need to buy it because I worked on it for this long, kind of. Like some people think of marketers like that. Mm -hmm. But he thinks of marketing as like someone who is passionate about something and is able to like make a change, a change that like actually helps other people, like whether it's like to inspire them and stuff like that. So, and it doesn't like matter what you do. It can, you can be like a, coffee shop or anything but like just something a marketer is someone who has this passion that will actually help other people change into like who they want to be if that makes sense Mm -hmm. so like that's kind of where he goes into and ties it with the brand marketing because like brands like nike and stuff they're able to do that and like so that's just kind of what he talks about and he goes really in depth like storytelling and like why ideas get spread why things are remarkable and why other things aren't and things like that. Mm. Yeah. I think it's good that you really mentioned good. Nike because I I know you read probably Shoe Dog, right? Oh, dude, so good. <laughs> <I> cried. <laughs> you cried? <laughs> but at which part? The end. <laughs> no, but the end is happy. What do you no, mean? but the end is like happy tears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, happy tears. That's good. I was like, not, no, not sad tears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, it's a really cool story. And I didn't even know that that's how much went into it. Because I feel like they've established their, I guess, culture almost of excellence. Yeah. And just like believing in yourself kind of. Because like he started off with like selling shoes in the back of his trunk. His mm-hmm. car, and like here he is literally like. Everywhere. Everyone knows Nike. Like there's no another person that hasn't not known Nike. No, yeah, Definitely. I think it's very interesting. So with marketing, with the type that you mentioned, the, what's his name? <laughs> I forgot his name. The guy. <laughs> Seth Godin. Okay. Sure. Seth. <laughs> Seth. <laughs> so for that type of brand marketing, they yeah. work on establishing the story for the brand? Yeah, more so like the, the message of the brand. Mm-hmm. I guess um, not like the product itself, but like what goes behind the brand, like what's the brand's mission and like, what does the brand want to do for people in that sense? Yeah. What kind of that marketing was, are you most into? The brand side. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've like stepped in, like digital is really cool, but 
I'm the, it's just hard for me, I'm not a tech mm-hmm. person. And like, there's other ones. It's like, um, it's like the oh, shoot. It's like analytics. I don't so know more it's, data I don't know, centered. I don't know if it's data analytics, but something in relation with marketing, and it just like mesh like seeing all like the uh like how much reach you got like how much ROI which is like the retention that you mm-hmm. got like consumer blah 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 I don't even know like things like that and it just like doesn't really like it just isn't fulfilling I guess like I don't like it's not nothing. personal yeah, yeah. it's, it's just, just a lot like, of analyzing I feel like yeah and there's people who like that and they're like that's sick but like for me it's just like it's more on the creative side I guess mm-hmm. which is just like something that like is more enjoyable like it doesn't feel like work you know Mm -hmm. yeah and so with everything that you're learning for brand marketing Mm because you're building your personal brand via social media right kind of I just like I guess like in a way like marketing myself Mm -hmm. who I am and like I guess like what I'm passionate about but in a sense yeah how do you feel like it differs between brand versus personal brand Good question. I feel like there's this thing where it's kind of bad to like not connect with the brand, like be attached to the brand, if that makes sense. It's bad to be attached to the brand? I feel like there's a thing, I don't know, from my perspective, I feel like, let's say like Adidas, I shouldn't like be Adidas, if that makes sense. Like I have to have some sort of like line drawn that makes sense for myself to do this, but there's obviously that connection. I don't know where I'm going with this, but like, <laughs> I guess brands, shoot, what was your question? <laughs> I was just asking about the difference between brand marketing versus personal brand marketing. Okay. Okay. I would say like, well, obviously, oh, okay. Basically what I was going with actually is uh-huh. like the brand that they have their own thing, like the brand's vision, the brand's mission, like let's say the brand wants to go like, full on like sustainability like that's what it is like everything should kind of revolve around that it's not really around a person but the personal side I feel like just revolves around you and like what you want or like who you are and like what you want to do for people but I feel like the brand has some sort of like thing obviously I wouldn't say it's just a person Mm -hmm. the brand is a brand and a person is a person I get that yeah brand like, it's not, like, a brand isn't, like, going to, I don't know. It's just, like, like, they have a vision, some sort of vision. And, like, a person obviously has a vision, too, but it's just, like, it's a person. Mm-hmm. Like, they have, like, different interests, like, things that they want and, like, things that they do and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, I, I feel like know. the brand is kind of more rooted, I guess, because they, I mean, they have their own niche like it's rare that it's going to get a car brand and they're going to move on to like makeup you know that's that's very different yeah yeah yeah. that's true like the I guess like what you're saying is like obviously they have like a core and they're like able to adapt as like the culture adapts but like a person is much more easier to kind of adapt they like Mm -hmm. try new things like a brand has like their core thing a person does too that's a good question (laughs) <laughs> I just feel like it's not the same just because <laughs> no I think I agree definitely that's a big question, though. That's a big question. thank you <laughs> proud of that one <laughs> I'll have to learn I'll have to learn about that <laughs> <laughs> and so for everything that you're learning at UC Davis do you feel like it applies more to the building the brand sort of communications and marketing or more of personal brand so like I'm going to be honest but the things that I've learned at school Yes, it's helped me become more understanding myself and how I talk to people, but I don't think it's actually helped me in like my career Mm -hmm. as much as I wish it would have. So like, basically it's most of, most of my time, honestly, like I probably do like an hour or two hours of homework a day. Uh And like, that's, and like everyone around me is like six hours a day, stuff like that you're balling I'm I'm just like not and like I'm doing I'm not doing terrible in school but I'm not like placing a lot of like emphasis or time in my school just because like I feel like it's not where I'm really growing because it's kind of something that like I just gotta like 
get my degree and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I invested like a lot of my time, like reading books, like going to the library and reading books on like passion branding or like watching YouTube videos and like doing like my own things, like internships or my Instagram, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I feel like I've actually gotten better as a person and not so much school, but obviously school like does some things. So more self-education. Yeah, self-education. That's why sometimes I'm like, I don't know how I can do this, but I'll, I'll honestly graduate. But sometimes it just gets hard. And it's like, bro, I'm not really learning. Like, mm. as much as I wish I could. Like, I wish I could just be like, be like create. They, I wish like I could create my own curriculum, you know. But you know, yeah, I feel like with systemic <laughs> education, that's just how it is. Like, you Never. don't need ninety percent of it, if not Never. more. Unfortunately. Yeah. 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 And I think especially with marketing courses, because this is kind of coincidental, but I started this one from UC Davis. It's no, like, it's a but it's, a, it's, um, is it what? Is it digital marketing? I don't remember what it's called. Is it a boot, wait, wait, is it a boot camp? No, 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 no. It's, it's a free course. <laughs> It's on um, Coursera. I love that website. It has so many just things to offer. For and sure. I feel like the things that they talk about, it's kind of, I don't want to be rude, but it's really outdated. Because I feel like the world and the world of marketing, it evolves much faster than people can catch on. Yeah. And the people teaching it, I feel like they're more of theorists rather than practitioners. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you, can I ask what course you're taking? Or do you know? Mm-hmm. Wait, let me look it up because I feel like I don't know how I don't know this, but I have it written down somewhere. It's it's the strategy of content marketing. Who's is it by a lady? Yes. 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 (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I think I think you're and do you have to like read a lot? Yeah, yeah. And do like little projects. Yep. Yeah. I don't think I need benefit. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, what are you like trying to get more into like content marketing? No, I think it's just very interesting because it's marketing something I'm moving into for future projects. I'm going to be really vague with that. Okay, but yeah, I feel yeah. like it's just then, very, I guess, important to touch up on a lot of things. And usually those courses, like for the most part, they're not beneficial, I'll admit, <laughs> but they kind of help put things into words, if that makes sense. Like it's the things that I know, but it just helps me understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. verbalize it. Yeah. Like the lingo kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I think I took that one um, my freshman year. I don't think it really helped. Like straight up, I don't think it really helped at all. Yeah, I think a lot of the where I like learned this stuff probably like reading books, mm-hmm. but like anthropology and stuff like that. Anthropology. What are some of your favorite books that you learned a lot from? Because I got to write this down. <laughs> I got to take so note. One book. Okay, I'll have to tell the authors later. Two books that like really I remember is one is like emotional branding. Uh huh. That's just the title of it, and the other one is passion branding. Okay, is it by the same author? um different author emotional brain mm-hmm. book I'm trying to think who it's by i don't know if it's mark gobe i don't think so oh i think it is mark gobe go with the okay. e line parenthesis like whatever it's all that. that one's really good it like helps you like really understand basic human needs like it really comes down from like what we want and like our needs and our wants. And so that book kind of goes into more about like these just like human basic needs, like evolution, things like that. And so like, for example, something I learned is like the three most important or three things that like we all seek is we seek novelty. Um, we seek I think you see connection. I think that was the other one. And then there's a third one. I think. I want to say it's autonomy. I'm not sure though. I have to go back into mm. that. But yeah. it like kind of talks more in depth about like the things that like we just naturally need and like how marketers are then able to kind of build around that. And 
kind of connect with them in that way. Mm-hmm. But it's really interesting. And like that could kind of help with like the type of content that you want to make and like the type of campaign and stuff like that, the projects that you want to do. If you like kind of build it around that, you're really able to like understand and be able to like create like a connection with the audience and kind of find out like who it is that like you're speaking to and who it is that like you're able to connect with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty interesting. It goes more deeper and like, just like the basic, like anthropology, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anthropology is really cool. I think I want to take a class in that too. Anthropology. What is that? That's the study of humans. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's, what's it called psychology sociology and anthropology but i don't know how sociology and anthropology are different so sociology is the society like how society affects people i'm pretty sure and then psychology obviously the the person as an individual and i think the anthropology is like human like in general like just anything human related from like how we evolutionize and like the things like uh survival of the fittest and stuff like that Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the type of emotions that we avoid and, like, we enjoy having, kind of. Yeah, so I feel like with marketing and with marketing, I don't know, people or brands, it's really more important to focus on the psychology aspect of it. That's why people with psychology majors, I feel like, are really good at marketing, too. Mm. Yeah, and then, like, I'm thinking biology might be kind of cool. Like, I feel like biology would connect because biology helps understand like human behaviors in a way Mm -hmm. like just like how we behave naturally and so that might like reflect upon like our actions and like why we choose things instead of other things so I think like that might be a good way to kind of I've like known people who took biology and they're like marketers now yeah yeah from biology to marketing wow yeah no and they're like doing crazy things yeah it's I feel like there's a bunch of different for a lot of careers I feel like there's different ways like there's no one way Mm -hmm. yeah like like, yeah you can like take an English major obviously political science but like English major communications major and like you still do fine Mm. that's interesting so I've heard (laughs) so you've heard so I've heard yeah I just don't really, I don't know. I think with marketing, what's interesting is how do they put it into like a systemic education system? Because I feel like it's so intuitive a lot of the time. Like intuitive as in like it like changes. I guess kind of, because for me, like I would say I'm pretty knowledgeable on personal brand marketing because I've kind of built up like my myself from zero basically. And for me, I've never really... Because I know there are different like strategies for it. And a lot of it is like content planning and this and that. But I've yeah. never done that. Like it's really spur of the moment sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. I like, okay, like content planning, but like, going off of that, I used to like kind of do like Excel sheet. Honestly, like I don't think it helped at all. Like it, it just, just seems tedious. Tedious and it makes it kind of less fun. Yeah. In a sense. Like obviously it can like keep you on track. But at the same time, like, I feel like the content that you deliver when you plan it is just, like, not authentic. Yeah. Yeah. I think it works with brands because, like you mentioned earlier, it's definitely more detached. Yeah. But with people, it's just so personal. Like, I don't know if that would work. You know? Yeah. Like, a brand, I feel like they could kind of maybe, like, develop, like, a whole brand plan of, like, what they mm-hmm. want to do for 2022. Kind of, like, the different, like, um I don't know like whether it's like societal issues or like people they want to like partner with and like the campaigns like they want to launch I feel like they could like kind of visualize that and that's because of like they're able to gather like consumer insights Mm -hmm. and then like kind of reflect upon that but I feel like a person is so much different in that sense yeah when you deliver that content or whatever like you don't it's hard to plan it it is yeah It just doesn't feel the same. No, definitely. Yeah. And then, like, when you, like, execute it, it just, like, doesn't feel good as well. 
because mm-hmm. like, you just don't relate yourself you don't relate to what you just said or posted or whatever yeah and then it's just like oh I just posted something but when you're like feeling a certain way and like you want to tell people something like some inspirational thing or something you've experienced and like in the spur of the moment and you share it like I feel like it just brings like a bunch of like excitement and like because you know like that's how that's like your authentic authentic self like at the moment right now and people mm-hmm. are able to like see that side of you no definitely I agree with that yeah. so do you is that the way you do it I kind of do that yeah it's just like I can't play <laughs> first of all it's just time consuming too uh-huh. I feel like it because like you spend time thinking oh what am I gonna talk about in two weeks yeah <laughs> like what am I gonna post into especially if it's a personal I think yeah this is applicable for like personal branding but I feel like it's like oh what type of video reel or whatever am I gonna want to post in two weeks like I don't know you know that just seems very detached because it is so far away yeah and you're just not in that moment I think a lot of what I've heard is that a lot of creators I guess they're like oh okay so what is my most active time and this and that but I think at the end of the day it just makes it more inauthentic because if you have something to say just say it because you'll never have the chance to say it again if that makes sense that makes sense that's Mm -hmm. fact yeah do you like do you kind of post on like a time span or like certain time of the day no I mean whatever comes if I want to share something I'm just going to share it that's see that's what works (laughs) (laughs) that's what works (laughs) no yeah it's just not the same for sure and I think with discipline I think the aspect that comes into it is the more you create the more you're going to want to create so that's how I feel like a person never runs out yeah I have a question do you have writer's block block writer's Writer's block block? creative block with what specifically (laughs) I guess like what you want to say I feel like sometimes, because with the podcast, especially with my individual episodes, I talk for like 40 minutes straight. Like that's a bit, that's a bit. But like, I feel like you're able to like carry it though. From yeah. Like the ones I've seen. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it comes off like that. <laughs> so I guess, I guess not. I mean, sometimes I do get confused because I'm like, mm-hmm. what am I doing in life? Like, what am I sharing sort of yeah. thing? But then I feel like it just resolves itself because I kind of figure out where I stand. So basically, no writer's block. No. But I feel like, I mean, there were times, but I don't think it's lasted more than a day. Do you? Mm, I feel like when, I feel like when things get boring, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like, life gets really constant, or not constant, like, this, like, stagnant, stagnant you know? Mm-hmm. It's like those times, like, in a, like, it's like a few days in a row. And I feel like that's probably where, like, I kind of get that. It's because I have no inspiration to grab from. Mm-hmm. So I feel like what's interesting with lifestyle content, because I feel like ours, it kind of falls into that. Like yeah. it's, it's in its own niche, but it, it's definitely lifestyle because it goes as we go. I yeah. feel like if you just, what I found is that if I spice up my life a little bit, the content just elevates. See, yeah. Just hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. Because like, and then like also though, okay. I heard that like when it comes to like content, people like to see like the day-to-day things too. Mm-hmm. like so maybe I think it's boring but maybe someone else might not think it's boring no definitely because for me when I edit my YouTube videos like some they're long right 17 minutes or whatever yeah. and to me because first of all I filmed it and I was there and then I'm editing it and I watched it 5,000 times like I don't want to look at it I just find myself so boring sometimes <laughs> but to people it's interesting you know yeah. Yeah, yeah no like your graduation one like like when you're talking in the morning and stuff like that and like how school is like not efficient in like time <laughs> it's just like it's like dude i really yeah <laughs> and, like we can't stop watching it really? like, I, I was like working out in the gym and i was just like playing in my ears uh-huh. I was, like, <laughs> like things like that so uh-huh. in a way i guess like yeah like maybe doing homework might be interesting to someone else <laughs> but definitely because i feel like people overthink honestly but the more yeah. a person has to offer in their, I guess, content and their sphere of content, the more people they're going to attract. Because yeah. the more you showcase, the kind of the more the window of opportunity opens. If that makes yeah. sense, that makes sense. That makes sense. Do you think? Okay, I'm kind of like confused with the Instagram algorithm. 
Mm-hmm. Some of like this going off of content marketing or whatever. But like, do you think that I heard this thing where it's like you post, let's say like a reel and then like it goes to like your uh the your main people, not your all your followers, but like I guess you could say like cheerleaders, the people who always engage with your content. Mm-hmm. And then like during that hour, that first hour, if they engage really well in it, then it will go to all your followers. And then that next hour, if they engage really well in it, then it goes to the explore page. Do you think that like it's true? I think I think for the most part, yeah. Because yeah. I've noticed the more engagement there is in the beginning, the more there's likely going to be down the road. Down the road. And usually they start showing up, like really showing up a week or two after they're posted. I don't know why that's the case, but that's what I've noticed. Yeah. 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 It's weird. Mm -hmm. I think the algorithm is really tricky because sometimes I notice like the past three months up until January, it's Mm -hmm. been really low. Like insights and impressions and everything. I don't know why. Christmas, I think. Maybe. Just that holiday season. It was like not it. And everyone on their New Year social media no right? <laughs> oh yeah. But um yeah, and I feel like uh the reels thing also I don't know if like they post like the time. Like when you post the reel. If it affects it. Why it shows up why why it shows up a week later, like why mm-hmm. or why you like your views or whatever like increases mm-hmm. a week later because like there is no time stamp on the reel. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, when you see a post, it's like five days ago or whatever. But then on the reel, it doesn't say that. Yeah. So I guess, but I just look at the comments. I see the oldest ones, and that's how I know when it was posted. Got you, got you, got you. Why did not know that? That's smart. I just stalk. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) (laughs) But I think with the algorithm, what's important is kind of, I mean, obviously you want it to favor you in a way, but I think it's important not to get caught up in it because then that takes away from the art of creation, I feel like. Yeah. And like, yeah, I agree with that for sure. I think I learned last year or last quarter, I learned, I took a social media class and Mm -hmm. we like had a full like um, section on like algorithms and stuff. And it's just like something, like what you said, like it shouldn't be something that you like rely on. I feel like a lot of biased. It's biased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like with the the algorithm. Yeah, the algorithm is biased. I guess, like in a sense, where like, like, I think it's like, let's say, like the gym or whatever. Like you post like gym photos, and like if you're a guy, it like will most likely go to dudes instead of girls. Oh yeah. Like that. Like that. In that way, I guess algorithms are biased. No, definitely. Yeah. But I feel like overall, it can be used as an excuse of like, oh, people aren't seeing my stuff. Like, it's just the algorithm messing with me. But I feel like that's a shift of responsibility a lot of the time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I know. It's kind of creepy, too. Just like seeing like everything that like you already, the things that you like and it already comes up. Like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get like a lot of like inspirational quotes and like things, like relationship quotes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, dude, like, how do you know? <laughs> how do you think this is what I want to hear right now? <laughs> have you seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix? I have not, no. You have to watch it. It is it's so good. creepy, but it's really good. <laughs> you should watch it 100%. Because it talks about the algorithm and the echo chamber and the confirmation bias. Like, it's all of those things. Very interesting. Confirmation bias. Is it so? Is it like the... Like the, when you see like a quote and you're like, oh yeah. Kind yeah. Of. Cause that's, I mean, that's what it is. You just share yeah. things that you yourself believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's trippy. Yeah. I know. It's kind of creepy. No, it like, is. I'd be like scrolling on my explore page and I like feel a certain way and I see this quote and I'm like, damn. Like, how did you know I felt like that? <laughs> it's like those, have you ever seen those? I guess on TikTok, they're more prominent, but it's like those videos are like, oh, this is your sign. No hashtags, no anything. Don't tell them <laughs> that person that you love them. And you're like, how did you know? <laughs> or, or it'd be like, it'd be like, or like, stop, watch this video. If you watch this video, your crush is going to text you. <laughs> I love those. It's so funny. And I'm like, excuse me, I'm waiting. <laughs> I feel like it's the same vibe. It's just, you, if you don't send this video to 20 of your friends, your mom's going to break her back. <laughs> like something just wild, unhinged. 
Like, <laughs> if you don't like this photo, your 2022 is gonna like be terrible. <laughs> I've seen those, and I have not liked those photos. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> no! Hopefully, it works no. out. Hopefully, <laughs> oh, it will be fine. That that has no meaning. But like, it's so I know some people like that stuff is kind of just like, bro. Like, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> No, yeah, I get that. I get that. Honestly, if it's like, oh, comment this emoji, like that's fine. Mm-hmm. But like, <laughs> like comment your favorite blue emoji or whatever. But if it's like, like this or else, it's just <laughs> or else, <laughs> like this or suffer, you choose. <laughs> See, that's when that's when like marketing is selfish. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're for, for their well, lives. That's, that's also a logical fallacy. That's the what's it called? False choice. Where you present people with two options. What's it called? Something dichotomy. I don't remember what it's called. False dichotomy? Yeah, maybe. Well, it's like, right. be my friend or be my enemy. It's that. Yeah. that that's the example. Which is scary. <laughs> Look yeah. at us going into logical fallacies. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> um, wait, okay. Did you like take classes related to, I guess, like marketing and stuff during high school? Mm, mm, I took entrepreneurship and that was a uh, like a section of it Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) that's so sweet and it was taught by this one guy who had a really successful company but during every single class at the same exact time he would get a call from one of his clients from (laughs) Vietnam because he was so international (laughs) so that was quite an adventure I'd say (laughs) oh my goodness (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay so does that mean that his class was not that good? No, it wasn't good at all. I feel like he just, like, it's all theorists, you know? Because I feel yeah. like with practitioners, like, they're very limited. Yeah. Especially with marketing and everything to do with that. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, from the textbook. It's just, like, you can't apply it to the real world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you want to, like, take these classes to get better at doing that. Mm-hmm. And be, like, a better marketer, but you're just learning about not related things it's just very obvious things yeah like very obvious things yeah and did you take psychology too yeah for yeah. like a semester <laughs> but did you like yeah. It? yeah I thought it was interesting mm-hmm. yeah I think yeah yeah what other classes do you take and like kind of human I don't know related not honestly that's pretty much it because most of the things I learned I learned just from experience because I feel like that's really the most valuable knowledge yeah yeah yeah. do you like okay I guess from your perspective do you like Mm -hmm. invest all your time in school because I know you like you read during school and like stuff like that I used to yeah (laughs) would you say like you don't really I mean obviously you want to do well in school but you have priorities in other areas Mm -hmm. well so since I've graduated yeah. Back when I did have school, literally like three weeks I know, that's ago. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks. Three weeks. I think I graduated. It's been almost three weeks. Three weeks. Three. Okay. Mm-hmm. But three. I think during then, obviously, like I want to do in school just because personal integrity. Because mm-hmm. if you start something, just finish it, you know? Right. Yeah. But because it's just high school, it's like the most base level thing. But I feel like that's why I didn't pursue higher education because I know that there wasn't really anything that I could take from it that would benefit me in regarding the aspects that I wanted to develop in. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, if you want to be a singer-songwriter, like, school's not really where it's... Yeah, I mean, I could go to, what's it called, Berkeley College of Music, if that would take me. I don't think they would. <laughs> that would be sick. But I mean, what for? Does that make sense? Like, I... yeah. Like, it would probably be kind of like, I guess, in terms of marketing, like, just like the textbook. Yeah, it's the same thing with music. It's the, mm-hmm. it's the systemic Education. version of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not helpful. Yeah, I don't like it. Personally. I don't like it either. It just, like, limits your creativity, I feel like. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, on the topic of marketing, and I guess the future... Would you, do you have a specific vision of yourself like five years from now? Where am I right now? I'm a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Five years. I feel like I'd be two years out of college. Two or years. three. Quick three. maths. <laughs> three, three or two years out of college. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess like career-wise. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like straight up 
probably like brand marketing. I want to be, okay, I don't think I can get it two years from now, but like in the long term, like brand marketing director at like Nike would be really sick. Um, that's kind of like where my focus is at right now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just doing anything that'll help me as a brand marketer, but also leaning into like Nike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think prior, you mentioned that with most of the things that you learn at college, it's kind of not exactly directly applicable. So what made you want to choose to pursue an education in the first place? Good question. Obviously, (laughs) okay. I think it's like, it's bad to say it's a safety, you know? Mm -hmm. I think like, going into business there's people who've like got into marketing and stuff like that without a degree and that's complete like like honestly I feel like they took the harder route but I feel like education like going into college just like provides this cushion and in case things like change or whatever I'll have this like place to kind of make those like mistakes and stuff like that I feel like just going straight into the real world for me after college and especially since I didn't know I wanted to do marketing like until like a quarter after my first year of college it just like I didn't really see any other way besides Mm -hmm. going to college you know but yeah I mean now I think like I really don't need to go to college but like I think it would help in the long run like maybe just to have like a Cause I feel like for business, like having some sort of degree will help just like maybe get your application seen or whatever. I've noticed that. Cause I've one time, like I think exactly a year ago, I was looking at a lot of marketing internships yeah. and all of them, every single one requires a bachelor's. And I don't know why it could be anything. Yeah. That's so weird. I know. And it's just like, so I think like that's when it comes in when the thing of like networking, which is being like, I don't know if you know, like, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, those professional websites. And so, like, I use that. But I feel like LinkedIn and stuff like that and being able to meet people at companies that you want to work at, that is, like, an avenue where you can take, maybe if you say you don't have, like, that solid or that education that they want, Mm -hmm. you know, and, like, kind of go through there. Because, like, you can, like, just by getting, like, a good word, it can really help and like showing that like oh like I can do same exact thing probably even better than someone who doesn't even have, that has a degree it's just knowing like knowing someone who sees that in you and like them helping kind of mm-hmm. do you think yeah. you would ever want to work for yourself or create your own company and market it that'd be cool I like okay I don't know I feel like I want to start like my own like clothing brand and make it really exclusive but that's like, I have to have like some sort of like credibility to do that. So I don't think I would do that for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I feel like, or like starting like a nonprofit, like towards like mental health would be really cool. I wouldn't be really a brand, but something that like I can give back to mm-hmm. would be kind of a cool idea. But obviously that does really with like starting it up, like kind of like a business, but not for business reasons. Yeah. And what yeah. about freelance marketing? Because like I've been seeing a lot of people. I don't know why, but they've been just yeah. popping up. I've never, my... I've never done freelance marketing. Why not? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> like, I don't know how to start it, if that makes sense. Uh, like, yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to go on like these sites or whatever. I just don't know how people get started. Mm. That makes sense. I think it is through social media because I've seen a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but they've been just popping up on my, yeah. what's it called? The For You page. And it's just people that are freelance marketers and they're just building their own brands, which I guess kind of works double because they're working with clients and also with themselves. That's so sick. Wait, okay. So do they like, what type of content do they do? Centered on marketing. <laughs> oh, and they're like, okay, okay. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I was thinking like freelance, like taking up projects and stuff from various companies. Yeah, or working with specific like people. how people do. Yeah. yeah, that would be kind of cool. I feel like never really thought about that. Yeah. I just feel like marketing is such a wide sphere nowadays, which I think is really cool because there's just so much opportunity that lies in it. Exactly. And I feel like, honestly, though, like I haven't really met a whole lot of marketers like I hear. 
but I feel like this is just because because of our school, like it's majority like STEM. Is it? Yeah. At least like <laughs> from what I've seen, I have not met any communications major. <laughs> like no one. I'm just like some people are like, what? Like, what did you even do with that? I mean, yeah. Wait, but, really? Like, no communication ma- majors? I haven't met anyone. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Maybe I haven't met enough people, but like all the people that I've met are either like um like biology biology. I don't even know, like some crazy like math science things. Some like, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you. Sorry. <laughs> it's not my thing. It's just like I feel like in that sense, it's so like it's hard to be I for me it's like hard to be creative in that area mm-hmm. no, a, I feel like it's you get creative like I think about math and stuff and you can be creative but once you see reach a certain level of excellence like it's not even proficiency you have to be a virtuoso in math yeah. to be creative yeah and it takes a lot to get up there oh yeah <laughs> you know, I like I took stats last quarter and like I've been taking math for like a year or so and I just like see these numbers and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? What do they mean? <laughs> like, no, it's so bad. Yeah. That's My sister, I'm- she took statistics, like I think exactly a year ago, and she would cry every single day of that class because <laughs> it was just horrible. Terrible. Yeah. It's so hard. It's so hard. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like we've been talking for a second now. <laughs> oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for being a guest. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really fun. Also, I enjoyed yeah. the lights. I was looking at them from a yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Fairy lights? <laughs> I like them. Thank Very you. I appreciate it. Pers- personalization. I wish I had white walls because you have like such a nice background. Mine's like purple. <laughs> Dude, my bed is right there. <laughs> yeah, but your walls are white. <laughs> like, I feel like it's a. No, I'm serious. Lights. No, but you have white walls. <laughs> we should trade. <laughs> <laughs> Swap.